Hello. Uh, today I'm going to read from the book of Genesis, chapter 41, verses 55 through 57. And then chapter uh, 42, going to read a little bit, uh, verses 5 through 7 and 17 through 24. When hunger came to be felt throughout the land of Egypt, and the people cried to Pharaoh for bread, Pharaoh directed all the Egyptians to go to Joseph and do whatever he told them. When the famine had spread throughout the land, Joseph opened all the cities that had grain and rationed it to the Egyptians. Since the famine had gripped the land of Egypt, in fact, all the world came to Joseph to obtain rations of grain. For the famine had gripped the whole world. The sons of Israel were among those who came to procure rations. It was Joseph as governor of the country who dispensed the rations to all the people. When Joseph's brothers came and knelt before him with their faces to the ground, he recognized them as soon as he saw them. But Joseph concealed his own identity from them and spoke sternly to them. With that, he locked them up in the guardhouse for three days. On the third day, Joseph said to his brothers, Do this, and you shall live, for I am a God-fearing man. If you have been honest, only one of your brothers need to be confined in this prison, while the rest of you may go. Take home your provisions for your starving families, but you must come back to me with your youngest brother. Your words will thus be verified, and you will not die. To this they agreed. To one another, however, they said, Alas, we are being punished because of our brother. We saw the anguish of his heart when he pleaded with us, yet we paid no heed. That is why this anguish has now come upon us. Reuben broke in. Did I not tell you to not do, do wrong to the boy? But you would not listen. Now comes the reckoning for his blood. The brothers did not know, of course, that Joseph understood what they said, since he spoke with them through an interpreter, but turning away from them, he wept. So in case you're not familiar, a little bit of background. The Joseph who is working for the Pharaoh here is one of the sons of uh, of. Jacob, who was renamed Israel, <clears throat> and uh, his, their, his father favored Joseph. He was the youngest at the time. The other brothers were jealous, and so uh, one day when uh, Jacob, Israel, sent Joseph out in the field to see, see his brothers, uh, they grabbed him and threw him in a well. They were going to kill him, and then they decided instead to sell him for uh, a little bit of silver to uh, some uh, traders. He ended up in, Joseph ended up in Egypt, and through a series of uh, stories, which are really cool to read, um, he became, uh, he became uh, Pharaoh's second in command and predicted the famine but that there would be a bounty seven years previous so that they would have the, the food to sustain through the, the famine. Uh, when Joseph was young, he told his brothers how he had a dream that all of his brothers would kneel to him. <clears throat> and here in this story, you see that dream came to fruition. You know, this for me, it says a few different things. One thing is, is it's, a, it's a story of forgiveness. You know, who could have really wronged Joseph for locking up his brothers for the rest of his life, for their lives? Or beating them, or tortured them, or whatever, for treating them the way he did. Because Joseph really did go through quite an ordeal. Uh, I watered it down quite a bit, but Joseph's ordeal was, was, was kind of intense. He forgave. He loved. He wept. When he saw his brothers, he wept. He could have been mad, but he wept. He wept. That just, that's how God wants us to love. That when we see those who wrong us, He wants us to weep and have compassion and have mercy. God wants mercy, not sacrifice. You know? How often do I forgive? A lot. Do I forgive as much as I should? Yeah. You know, the funny thing about forgiveness is that sometimes I'll have somebody do something wrong to me. And I'll be like, okay, you know what? It's all good. I'm good. I forgive you. I forgive him, God. It's okay. It's fine. 
And I'll be good with it, and I'll pray for them. And then, like, two weeks later, I'll remember it, and something will stir up, and I'll have this in my gut. It's almost like, like, you know, the devil in my shoulder. Like, oh, oh, remember what they did to you. <laughs> and I have to stop and call them, like, I forgive them. It's okay. I don't know. Forgiveness is not easy. It's not It's not always easy. Especially when it's someone that we love or care about that wrongs us. But that's what God calls us to do. Because if there's no forgiveness, then there's no love. It's just a matter of getting what we want out of life and getting even. And getting even, you never really get even. You just bury yourself further. You weigh yourself down with those emotions, you know. Holding on to pain and not forgiving is like... I heard some... I've heard a few different people say it. But it's like consuming poison and expecting the other person to die. That's weight you're holding on you. I don't know. I, I'm reading this book uh, called Everyone Has Someone to Forgive or something like that. It's by Dr. Alan Hunt. And it's a really small book. It's only about that thick. And it just goes through... Uh, it's got a handful of stories about uh, people forgiving other people. And I... You read you read a story and then there's some questions for reflections and then there's uh, there's a challenge to do something. Sometimes uh, the, they ask you to the book asks you to uh, to forgive somebody in a particular way, whether it be um, like one was writing a letter. Maybe you won't mail it. You don't necessarily have to mail it, but to write a letter of forgiveness to somebody. And. Um, I read it the first time, and there was there was a lot that it was hard for me to do. Like it was, e it's easy for me to forgive, but to do the actions, it was hard. And so uh, I'm reading it again, and I'm gonna follow it through. And it also suggests having a journal, a forgiveness journal. So I'm doing that. Forgive for yourself. You know, you don't have to forget. You don't have to act like nothing ever happened. You know, you don't have to stay friends or whatever with whoever, but forgive for yourself. Love yourself that much to forgive. God wants to see you happy. He doesn't want to see you burdened with anger and hate and frustration over someone else. It's just not worth it. You know. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear God, there's a there's a lot of forgiveness that needs to happen in this world. Please help all of us to have mercy blossom in our hearts and compassion blossom in our hearts so that we can forgive and love the way that you do. You sent down your son and we treated him horribly. We beat him, we spit in his face, we mocked him, we cussed him out. We whipped him nearly to death. And we drove nails through his hands and his feet. And strung him up on a cross to die. And then for good measure stabbed him with a spear at the very end. And he forgave us. Some of his last words were, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Teach us to forgive. Teach us to love, God. Jesus, help us to love like you do. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You have a great day. First, last, and always pray.